Good afternoon. It's lovely to see you all here this afternoon. We're trying a different day for our carol service, so it's great that you've all turned out. Uh, welcome to our annual carol service. You should all have an order of service, hopefully, or you should all have sight of an order of service. Because uh, the uh, service will proceed unannounced. Um, the carol words will be on the screens, uh, but if you can't manage the screens, they're in the pale blue books, the pale blue hymn books in the pews. And the numbers are alongside them in the orders of service. There's lots of excited children and adults ready to go. <laughs> The dawn breaks and the animals awake and the child in the manger stirs and into this pastoral scene we gather. Not only to remember what was, not to try to satisfy our childish memories, but to praise God for the incarnation and to celebrate Emmanuel, God with us. We're going to stand to sing our first carol Come and join the celebration. Going to pray, let's pray. Lord Jesus, please forgive us if we get grumpy and stressed as we trudge through the never ending tasks set before us this Christmas. Our to do lists keep getting longer with shopping lists, presents to buy, church services, and family gatherings, and we're running short of time. Christmas is almost here. Restore the joy of Christmas to our hearts and help us to find time to relax each day and to make time for you, our one true source of joy. Amen. We're going to say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <coughs>
Christmas is a special time to reflect on Jesus Christ. The wonder of his lowly birth brings meaning to our lives. There really is no other reason we celebrate this day, the birth of God's precious Son and the life he willingly gave. But so much seems to distract us. In the busyness of our lives, we lose our focus in all the happenings, not knowing we leave out Christ. We lose sight of the true meaning as we endlessly rush about, trying to find that perfect gift seems to cloud our Saviour out. We need to stop and reflect a while, remembering our precious Lord, his birth, his life and sacrifice, and all that he stands for. For though the world may celebrate, it seems though for other reasons. Let's keep in mind that Jesus Christ is the true meaning of the season. We are about to enjoy a story that has been told and retold for 2,000 years. The Nativity reveals something very special about God, that he was prepared to be with us and live among us. Imagine the stars in the sky, the countless constellations, the sprawling solar system, and among it, a little planet called Earth. God made all of these things and all of the people and inhabitants of our planet. Just over 2,000 years ago, when we most needed him, God came down to be with us, to save us and show us how life should be lived. He could have chosen anywhere to be his home. He could have built a palace for himself that would have made the grandeur of the Roman Empire seem like nothing, but he didn't. God chose to send his son to be born among the forgotten, the overlooked and the poorest. This is the story of how God came to be with us. The story opens with a young woman in her home, Mary. Unless you look a little deeper, there is nothing particularly remarkable about Mary. She was from a town called Nazareth, and she was engaged to be married to Joseph. But to God, she was very important. So important that God sent an angel down from heaven with a message for her.
The angel told Mary that she is very special and that God is with her. But Mary found it hard to understand why the angel had come to see her. She was just an ordinary woman. She worried what the angel meant by the greeting. Seeing she was scared, the angel told her not to be afraid. God is very pleased with her, and she will give birth to a son. She is to call him Jesus, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. But Mary didn't understand how this could be. She was not yet married, a virgin. How could she have a son? The angel explained how the Holy Spirit will come, and his power will give her a baby, and people will call him the Son of God. The angel departed, leaving Mary excited about the news of the baby, and she told Joseph, the man she was about to marry, all about it. But the Roman emperor, Caesar Augustus, who ruled over the land, sent an order saying he wanted to count every single person in the country. So everyone, including Mary and Joseph, had to go back to their hometown to be registered. Joseph came from a faraway town called Bethlehem. Because Mary was engaged to be his wife, she came with him to Bethlehem. To save her aching legs, Mary rode on a donkey. During the journey, Mary was nearly ready to give birth to her baby. Although tired and weary, Mary and Joseph travelled for many miles. They went from Nazareth in Galilee to Judea and then to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, they knocked on every door in town, looking for a place to stay. But everywhere was full of people. Each time they were given the same answer. Lots of people had come down to be counted, so the whole town was full. There were so many families to accommodate. Mary and jo Joseph nearly gave up, but they tried the very last guest house. <laughs> Joseph desperately asked for help, but the owner of the last guest house replied that he was very sorry, but all of his rooms were full with other guests. All he could offer was his stable out of the back, where they kept all of the animals. They thanked him for his generosity. At last, they had somewhere for the baby to be born.
So, Mary and Joseph went to stay in the stable. It was a very difficult place to bring a new life into the world. Dirty, smelly, unhygienic. But Mary and Joseph made the best of it. When the baby came, they wrapped little Jesus in the clothes they had. They didn't have anything to put him in, so they placed the Son of God in a manger, a trough that is used to feed animals. I'm not sure this is what Mary was expecting. The angel said Jesus would be called the Son of the Most High, But as she looked at the sleeping baby in the manger, she knew that he was a very precious gift. So now we come to the part of the service um, where all our lovely children who have come dressed as angels or shepherds or anything, if you'd like to come forward, and we're going to sing Away in a Manger. We're going to be accompanied by chime bars and the bell lyre. So if you could all come and stand around here, please, that would be lovely. The children are going to sing the first verse, and then if everybody else would like to join in and help them in the second two verses, that would be lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Can we keep all of our shepherds together now? Will all the shepherds stay? Because we need you for this next bit. And the angels, actually, as well. This is a very important part of the story. The kings come a bit later on. (laughs) Okay, meanwhile... In some fields nearby, a group of shepherds were keeping watch over their flocks. It was night time, and they were surprised, to say the least, to see an angel of the Lord appear in front of them. The glory of God shone all around the shepherds, and they were terrified. You see... These shepherds were just ordinary people going about their daily lives. They weren't considered very important. Nobody took much notice of them. So they were surprised when the angel spoke to them. The angel told them not to be afraid, that there's news of great joy, good news for people across the world. 
Today in Bethlehem, a saviour has been born, explained the angel. You will find a baby lying in a manger. Well, as if that wasn't enough for the humble shepherds to take in, the angel was soon joined by a huge group of angels called the heavenly hosts. They said, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth. The shepherds didn't know what to do. They decided that the best thing was to go to Bethlehem, as the angel had said. They wanted to see what had happened, what the Lord had told them. When they had seen him, the shepherds told everyone they met about the child. People were amazed to hear the story. Are you amazed too? The son of the Most High, born in a stable. Someone who would be called the Son of God, placed in a dirty manger with only poor shepherds to greet him. The angels said it was good news for all people across the world. And there's something else about this birth that is good news, particularly for the poorest people on earth, because when they see their saviour has come to dwell with them, not distant, but humbling himself, it offers hope. Hope to everyone in the world that they are accepted and can come to him whether rich or poor, important or forgotten. Mary, who had seen it all happen, kept these things close to her heart. The shepherds went back to their flocks. But something had changed for the shepherds. They still had work and family. Nothing in their lives appeared to have changed accept them. They glorified and praised God for the things they had heard and seen. They wanted to express the joy they had found and change the world around them. And what better way to celebrate the birth of Jesus. These humble shepherds had their lives transformed through an encounter with Jesus. 
So please welcome him into your hearts this Christmas too. And now we're going to have um, Sarah and Harry with Oh Holy Night. This is just beautiful, so I hope you enjoy this. Thank you. That was really, really lovely. Thank you. Sometime later, more people came to visit, but they didn't come straight to the stable. These three important people, sometimes called kings, sometimes wise men, were magi. And these were very clever people who knew all the secrets of the stars. But they'd made a mistake. They knew from examining the heavens that an important event was taking place. A bright star rose in the sky. And they followed, they followed the star to worship the person whose birth it foretold. 
They knew the star heralded the king of the Jews. And where, a king, where would a king be born? Yes, they went straight to the palace. Well, they didn't find him there. Then they saw the bright star ahead of them again and followed it until it stopped. The wise men saw the child and they worshipped him. Each of them brought a special gift to give to the baby Jesus. Recognising Jesus as King of Kings, the first wise men brought him gold. Frankincense was the gift of the second because he knew Jesus was the Son of God. And the third wise man brought myrrh because he believed that Jesus was the saviour of the world. Each of them gave Jesus a precious gift, and that's why we give gifts at Christmas, particularly to poor and needy people. They went home, even wiser men, realising that precious things are worth far more than money and are not always found in the richest of places. They realise that they should offer their wealth to Jesus, the Son of God, born into poverty, who was a friend of the poor and needy people.
just while um, we're going to have our prayers of intercession now, and while everybody's making their way up, um, can I just say that what we're going to do, we're going to sing a verse of a carol, and then there's going to be a prayer, and then there's going to be another verse of a carol and a prayer. And there's a response. And um, when everybody say, when the people doing the prayers say, Jesus, light of the world, we say, shine in the darkness. Jesus, light of the world, shine in the darkness. into a normal family we think of our families the people we find it easy to love and the people who are harder to live with help us to see you in each person jesus light of the world shine in the darkness jesus born in a stable away from comfort and security we think of people without a safe home this winter people who are homeless or in temporary accommodation asylum seekers and refugees be with these people and those working to help them. Jesus, light of the world, shine in the darkness. A sacrificial offering for you to use. Take away our selfishness. And teach us to love as you love. Take away our sense of pride. And so show us the meaning of humility. Take away our blindness. And show us the world through your eyes. Take away our greed. And teach us how to give as you gave. Show us your ways. Teach us your path that we might walk with you more closely. Our hand in your hand. Our feet in your footsteps. From the baby in a stable. To eternity. Jesus, light of the world, shine in the darkness. Jesus, worshipped by shepherds and kings, we think of the different nations which make up our world, countries in which people's lives are torn apart by war, by natural disasters, by poverty. Help us to work with your justice and peace. Jesus, light of the world, shine in the darkness. Jesus, our Emmanuel, thank you that you have promised to be with us always. We pray for people we know who are ill, people we know who are going through difficult times. Be with them and hold them in your love. Jesus, light of the world, shine in the darkness.
we come together now and sing happy birthday jesus glad tidings of great joy we bring happy birthday jesus spread the news to every land and let the people know his birthday party is just at hand as candles burn and glow god sent his son his special gift to bring us hope and peace to give our lives a marvelous lift his wonders never cease this baby born in bethlehem is god in human flesh he came to save and not condemn our souls he will refresh his party is the best in town and you have been invited come be with christ who wears the crown and let's just get excited let's sing again those songs of old which stir in us this season and gladly share the truth we hold that jesus is the reason us again now um, when I was at my grandson's carol service the other day all the teachers I could see them going round and they were going like this to everybody I thought what were they doing and they were telling all of the children to try and be quiet there's a very very special message in this in this song that they're going to sing for us the words are very very simple but very beautiful so children, I know it's all exciting, I know we're all getting ready for Christmas, but please could you just try and just be quiet so that we can hear the words that are being sung. Thank you. <laughs> Gracious and generous God, we bring you our thanks and our praise for all of your gifts to us. Especially tonight, we thank you for the gift of children, for the children that have taken part, for the children who are running around enjoying themselves, and for the child who came as Jesus. We bring you our thanks and praise for the gift of Jesus. And we bring you these gifts. Gifts of money, of time, of energy, of lives, to say thank you for all that you've done for us. And we ask that you will take, use them, and bless them 
In Jesus' name. Amen. Before we get ready for the last hymn, um, can I just say a few thank yous? First of all, I'd like to say thank you very much to all of you for coming. Without everybody coming, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't make it as special as hopefully it was. So to all the children who have taken part in the nativity, a really big thank you to you because it wouldn't, wouldn't happen without you either. To Matt and Caroline and Olivia, our gorgeous baby Jesus. I know she's a girl, but it doesn't matter. She's still a little baby and she's been absolutely perfect. Thank you so much for agreeing to do it. To Kay and Jane and Janet for helping everybody get onto their places in time and getting dressed up. Uh, to Mike, I want to say thank you to Mike because he's helped get all the service ready um, in terms of photocopying, etc., and doing the sound desk and also setting up the staging. Yeah, and to Natalie as well, yeah. Natasha, sorry, I've said the wrong name. To Natasha as well. Thank you, Natasha, for helping. To Liz and to the praise group thank you so much for singing and thank you Liz for playing thank you very much um, to Chris and to Sarah and Harry thank you so much it was just a wonderful addition I think to our service made us really think about the meaning thank you thanks so much for the time that you've put into it I know a lot of practice has gone into it but it was beautiful um, and if I've forgotten anybody else, I'm really sorry, but thank you to everybody anyway. And coffee and tea will be served in the lounge after the service. Um, and after the singing of the last hymn, there's some words on your orders of service, and we'll sing carols out into the community after. So the lights are going to go out hopefully shortly, and the children will stand at the front with, with their candles, and we'll sing, O Come All Ye Faithful. <laughs>